important was the visit by the new Australian Prime Minister, Scott Morrison, to Jakarta. He made it pretty quickly into his unexpected um, elevation <laughs> to the key role. How, how, for you, as someone who's been negotiating this economic agreement for some time, how important was that he did make that visit? It was hugely important uh, and, in fact, critical. Uh, you can imagine uh, our dismay uh, when that uh, internal rift uh, happened uh, among the uh, government coalition. Uh, and of course, the first question on our minds was what's going to happen to our trade agreement, right? Uh, but uh, Prime Minister Morrison and uh, his team uh, quickly getting back on track uh, without hardly skipping a beat uh, uh, came as a huge relief. Um, and uh, I think uh, we're on track for this to be a fairly significant and potentially even historic milestone in the relations between our two countries. Thomas Lembong, I understand that you, uh, you've you also been in Sydney as well as Melbourne and you met with some Australian super funds who traditionally have been quite reluctant to invest anywhere but um, a vehicle that is very safe in Indonesia is to them a bit too risky. Can you tell us what were you talking to them about and what right, feeling did you right. get back from them? First of all, um, Indonesia is a lot risky today compared to say uh, 15 or even 7 years ago. Um, last year we got upgraded by Senate and Poor, uh, which makes us investment grade by all three major rating agencies for the first time uh, in 20 years, right? And frankly, uh, given 5% uh, GDP growth consistently year in year out um, and continuing economic development, um, I think we're going to get less risky over the next 10 to 15 years. Uh, yes, there might be the occasional pothole or the occasional downturn, uh, but the secular trend, I would say, is now firmly entrenched. Right? Having said that, um, what I did admit, for example, Helen, is uh, it's not only a demand problem, right? Like even if all your superannuation funds doubled their allocation of capital to Indonesia today, uh, we wouldn't have enough instruments to, to sell them, you know? Mm -hmm. So we have to admit that we've performed poorly in persuading our companies to IPO or do rights issues, list not only bonds, but securitizations or other instruments. So frankly, it's a supply issue as well. But there, I think your investment banks come in, you know, the Macquarie's and others uh, who can help to underwrite, you know, uh, offerings from our companies. Um, superannuation funds, pension funds, insurance pools are ultra long-term capital, right? So uh, certainly uh, I did not uh, urge them to take a big plunge tomorrow. Uh, what I think I urged them was to dedicate adequate resources internally to monitor and track uh, Indonesia uh, and to nibble, but prepare to nibble for the next 20 years, mm. right? So basically just gradually ease into it, but I think that process has to start and potentially accelerate, right? As, uh, <clears throat> as the Indonesian market continues to mature and, you know, yields continue to compress or, you know, more opportunities come up. I think will become more and more relevant to your uh, pension funds and your insurance pools. Did you feel like you got a good response from them? Were they genuinely interested in, in what you were suggesting? I know it's always hard to read the room, but... Well, I think back to realism. I think we both were sort of looking at each other and understanding that this is going to be a lot of work. Um, you know, we have to bring more companies to market. Uh, both on the fixed income as well as on the equity side. Uh, they're going to have to find ways. Uh, a lot of them invest only through fund managers, not directly, right? So they also have to find fund managers uh, who have capability uh, in sifting through the risks and opportunities uh, in Indonesia. So it's going to take time, but again, for me, the priority is to uh, get started, get the ball rolling, and, uh, and then gradually uh, 
accelerate the snowballing.